Hey clan, it's Ross Stisi, aka The Bearded Broker, deciding to do a weekly video on Facebook Live. Uh, we get a lot of questions from all across the UK, from first time buyers, from next time buyers. Uh, we get questions in the uh, first time buyer groups and that sort of thing as well. So my intention is to bring a weekly video to Facebook Live. So feel free to ask any mortgage questions that you that you wish to ask. Uh, we'll also be getting more people on this on a weekly basis. For examples, uh, for example, solicitors, estate agents, surveyors, as we go along. So this week I've taken three questions from the forums and from uh, previous questions that we have been asked and I will go through each of them and I'll answer as we go. So the first question that I have is from Alice uh, and she is asked that she's a first time buyer and she's self-employed as well and simply can I get a mortgage? So without knowing much more on the situation, so am I first time buyers that are self-employed can get mortgages, absolutely but you tend to find that the minimum period of being self-employed is 12 months or more, or at least having your first tax return done. So 12 months or more typically is what you would need to be to get a mortgage if you're self-employed. Now that doesn't really matter if, it, if you're a first time buyer or if you're a home mover or a buy to let landlord, typically you're looking for 12 months. Now, the can I get a mortgage? So I suppose that really answers that question. The best thing to do is speak to a mortgage broker, speak to a mortgage advisor. Again, what typically happens is your first year of self-employment, you've got a lot of cash outlay and potentially not a lot of cash coming back in the way, depending on what the business is. So when you come to sit down with your accountant, your accountant goes through the books and goes through the numbers and you're right off most of that cost, so you, your your net profit ends up being very, very minimal. Then you try and get a mortgage and it becomes extremely difficult. So two things I would recommend is first speak to your accountant way in advance and speak to a mortgage advisor uh, or a mortgage broker way in advance as well uh, to prep yourself for the future. Uh, so when myself and my wife as self-employed people as well, when we did this, we planned it three years in advance. We'd already been self-employed for a number of years, but when we were looking to buy, we sort of reverse engineered the whole thing, thinking, well, how much money do we need to try and earn to buy the house that we wanted to live in and bring our kids up in sort of thing. So we reversed the whole lot and said, well, we need to get it to there. So therefore, let's start working towards that. So hopefully that answers your question. So Alice, thanks very much for your question. Next, we've got Jonathan. Uh, asking, are there still 95% mortgage deals available and how do I get one? Uh, Jonathan, the answer to your question, it's a very good question and just to explain it to anyone that is not quite sure what that means. So really, it essentially means putting down a 5% deposit. So in a real life example, if you're buying something for, for, for easy counting, you're buying something for £100,000, you need to put down £5,000. In that example so the house is selling for a hundred thousand you're able to buy it for a hundred thousand and you need to come up with five thousand now that can be your own savings it can be a gift from a relative it can be inheritance as long as as long as you can prove where those savings have come from then then that shouldn't be a problem now during lockdown and all that period that's just gone by fairly recently a lot of the 95% mortgages had disappeared and you needed much bigger deposits. That has kind of stopped. There was a few lenders came back into the market and many more have now followed. Essentially, what happened during that period is, is one or two lenders were left in, but they didn't want to take all the risk of all the mortgages uh, with only 5% deposits, so they pulled out as well. So ultimately now, there's more and more lenders coming back to the market, which is great. It creates more competition and creates better deals for you guys. So yes, Jonathan, the answer is yes. There's now plenty of 95% mortgages available and happy to chat to anyone that wishes to do so. Uh, Stephanie, so two questions left by the way. So Stephanie, how long do I have to be on a full-time job to get a mortgage? You actually don't have to be 
in a full-time job at all you don't even have to have started your full-time job to be honest all you need is your contract signed and in place so if your contract states that you're going to start on the 1st of October next month and it's signed by you and by the other side you can apply for a mortgage today on the basis of that contract uh, going ahead so there's your answer hopefully Stephanie and thanks for the question the next one and last one is for Stephen can you please outline the main point of the house buying process for a first time buyer I love that question uh, I've got a video on YouTube that really takes you through in detail all the main points I, I won't do that here today again you can you can see our uh, video on YouTube but ultimately the first thing is always speak to a mortgage advisor or mortgage broker first because they will sit down with you they'll go through affordability they'll go through your credit check they'll go through you know where you want to buy you know all that sort of thing so take you through your income and expenditure and affordability and really get you a decision in principle which that is essentially a credit check being done by a lender to see if in principle you can get a mortgage you can then establish well, okay, with my deposit, I can get a mortgage of £200,000 or whatever that might look like. So once you have that bit of comfort to know how much you can budget for, uh, a, a mortgage advisor or broker can put you in touch with an estate agent or estate agents and put you in touch with a solicitor as well. You're going to need a solicitor at some point to, to put in an offer on a property that you're looking to buy. But ultimately, get the numbers right first. You then go out looking for properties it could be on right move or if you're in and around edinburgh you've got espc or you've got the bspc aspc uh and and there's plenty of platforms you've got zoopla and that sort of thing as well once you've found a property you then want to speak to a solicitor a solicitor firm will be able to guide you as to you know what properties are selling for in that area so the solicitor will then instruct you well you know, if you want a chance of buying that property in Scotland, we're going to need to put in an offer of £200,000, for example. That solicitor will then put that offer in to the person that's selling it, or, or their solicitor anyway, and then, assuming that gets accepted, there's a lot of other things in the middle there, but again, you need to sit there with an advisor to discuss all the other intricacies in the middle. Then, once that offer has been accepted, you can then contact your mortgage advisor again, We'll then get all your documents in, we'll check all your documents over, we'll make an application to the lender, and then the lender will do their bit for and doing all their checks and, and, and that sort of thing. Once the mortgage has been offered, then your solicitor will take over and they will do all the legal process through to the point where you get your keys. Now, what I've said for many, many years is this is a very process-driven thing. You know, for you it should be fun, it should be exciting viewing properties, it should be exciting, uh, you know, putting offers in and that sort of thing. Let your mortgage advisor do the process for the mortgage. Let your solicitor do the process for the legal stuff and you enjoy the rest. It is very process driven, but it's up to you to enjoy it. So speak to a mortgage advisor, find yourself a property, speak to the solicitor, get an offer in, speak to your mortgage advisor again, and between, if you get a good advisor on board and a good solicitor on board, you should be kept right all the way through to the very, very end. If you've got any questions, please just uh, pop them in the comments below, or indeed, uh, just get in touch with us directly at the office. It's 0131510 where we will be happy to help. So hopefully that's of use. We aim to bring you these week. Uh, weekly videos and it's trying to jargon bust it's trying to get rid of the nonsense and we aim to bring more professionals on as well who have the same aim as me and that is to get rid of the jargon and make this as easy as possible for you guys out there to get yourselves on the property ladder and anyone that's already on that wants to buy something new we aim to make that process as easy as possible so it's Ross Stisi from the Stisi group I'm also known as the bearded broker and we'll see you again next week. Any questions, please let me know. And we'll see you soon. Thanks very much.